Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of pediatric brain. This will be a case of cerebral atrophy. A six month old child was brought to us with a history of inability to roll, crawl, or seat. The baby had history of preterm delivery with low birth weight and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see the sagittal section of the pediatric brain. You can see the cerebral sulci look prominent. This prominent sulci and gyrate took our attention. However, the superficial area could not be well evaluated with this transducer. So we will use the linear transducer later. Here is the sagittal sections and you can see prominence of sulci. We can see the corpus callosum and on color doppler you can see this is the anterior cerebral artery and, and the callosal branch so we hope there is no corpus callosal abnormality here's the coronal section and you can see the lateral ventricles with choroid plexus still the sulci look prominent here's the cordothalamic region on coronal section This is the third ventricle, it looks quite prominent. This is the cerebral vermis. Now let's evaluate these features with high frequency linear transducer. Here's the high frequency view and you can see the sagittal section of the pediatric brain and you can see prominent sulci with features of white matter volume loss. You can see there is a wide space between the scalp and the brain. So this widened extraventricular CSF spaces indicate the cerebral atrophy. These are the frontoparietal regions. Let's see on coronal section, you can see the wide subarachnoid space and prominent sulci. The ventricles are also prominent. So this feature suggests it as a case of cerebral atrophy, predominantly at the frontoparietal lobes. This was a consequence of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in this patient. Here is the coronal section and you can see the atrophied brain matter. Here is the sagittal and coronal sections and you can see the prominence of sulci with dilated extraventricular CSF spaces and diffuse white matter volume loss indicating cerebral atrophy. So in summary, prominent sulci and extraventricular CSF spaces are seen with diffuse white matter volume loss predominantly involving the frontal and parietal lobes indicating cerebral atrophy. Now the take home message. Hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is not an uncommon case in our community. A regular follow-up scan is recommended in affected children to assess the progressive cerebral atrophic changes. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.